What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Beyond Bounces and Boundaries. This is your host, Santosh Kumar. And in today's episode, we'll review the Game 4 of Ashes 2023 between England and Australia. We are witnessing one of the most exciting and thrilling test match series in modern day cricket, especially in the last 5 to 10 years. But what makes this Ashes series so special? Is it basketball? Is it Australia's defensive approach? Or is it the drama on the field and off the field? When I think of this series, the thing that comes to my mind is this is a clash of two of the strongest teams that have been assembled in modern day cricket. To talk about Australia's dominance, Australia in the past four years, in the past four years, they've lost only three test match series and all the three have come against India in the Border Gavaskar Trophy. And to talk of England's dominance, until Brendan McClellan took over, in the past 17 games, England were pathetic. They had won one game, lost 11, and they had drawn five games. That's 17, right? And since Brendan McCallum took over, since Brendan McCallum took over, they were 11 and 2. And now in this series, the two teams have completely different approaches to test match cricket. And that is what is making this, this series so exciting. In other words, to put it in other words, when two contrasts match each other, when two contrasts clash each other, something magical happens. Let's let's go back to 2019. The Super Bowl, the Super Bowl 53 between New England Patriots and Los Angeles Rams. The Rams entered the Super Bowl, that is the finals, as the favorites. They were the offensive powerhouse. They were clearly the favorites to win the Super Bowl. But Patriots, who were always known for their defense, was spearheaded by the head coach, Bill Belichick. And then the rest is history. The offensive powerhouse of the NFL in 2019, in 2018, 2019 season was just stopped to three points. New England Patriots won the game 13 to three. And in this match, and in this match, Australia got basketballed. Australia got basketballed. And when I think of basketball, when I think of basketball in its purest form, I think of a monster. What? Monster? Wait, let me explain. When I think of basketball in its purest form, I think of a monster. It comes from this particular quote of Dr. Jordan B. Peterson. Jordan Peterson is a Canadian psychologist. And he's, he's also an author. He's written one of the best books on personal development. It's called 12 Rules for Life. You should check it out. But he has this quote where he says, you should be a monster, an absolute monster. And then you should learn how to control it. And this sums up basketball, right? Basketball at its purest form is controlled aggression. It's calculative. It's dangerous. It's controlled. It's enthralling. And Within a matter of few minutes, it takes the game away from you. And you're left wondering, what in the world did I just witness? And Australia were a victim to basketball in the fourth test match. So, as we praise basketball, as we scrutinize basketball, it is England's loss to suffer. While well, they technically did not lose the game, they had drawn the game. But England failed to bring back the urn. That's what they fight for the ashes. And this is going to sting them a lot. This is going to sting them a lot more than the loss. Because in sports, there's a, there's a beautiful saying where draws hurt more than losses. And it's true. This, this particular game was a perfect testament to the score. So when we look at this game, we have to see where was this game won. But here we do not have a result. So there are like I said, there are a few takeaways from this game. Let's look at it from the standpoint of where did Australia gain advantage or uh, where did England lose their advantage? Let's get into it. So number one, the direction of a game is always decided on day one. The direction of a game is always, is always decided on day one. When Ben Stokes won the toss and decided to bowl at Old Trafford, he was looking down at history. He was staring it right in the eye and saying, let's, let's give it a shot. Let's be the first one to do it. 
and what's the history no team has ever won a test match at old trafford after winning the toss and deciding to bowl this was the history that he was chasing this was the history that ben stokes england were chasing and so they decided to put australia to bat australia australia had a lot of chances to gain but they did not capitalize the top 5 of the 6 batsmen scored more than 30 runs the top 4 of the 6 batsmen scored more than 40 runs by the end of first innings they could have scored at least at least 80 runs more but they were all out for 317 it was now england's time to bat and they made australia pay for their mistakes australia got bass bowled England were off to a flyer start. I mean, they lost Ben Duckett early on, but since then they did not look back at all. Zach Crawley, Zach Crawley scored a brilliant hundred at a strike rate of over hundred. England's top six of the seven batsmen scored fifties, which is remarkable, and also at a strike rate of over sixty. That is impeccable. They finished the innings. with the mammoth lead of 275 275 they scored 592 and this is where i want to question england's approach the thing that makes it more interesting is that why did england declare so late did england question their own baseball strategy now note that let's let's set the scene over here england england on the very first day of ashes 2023 they declared on the first day very early and they put australia to bat they could have scored they could have scored extra 40 50 runs easily right they wanted to put pressure on australia my question is did england question their style of play because if england say if england are who they say they are if they are fearless england why did you declare so late you could have declared in the day 3 of the first session when you guys took a 200 run lead the reason i say this is because england are fighting history they are looking for a result to win the game to keep the series alive and what i feel is that england might have england might have taken their chance away from themselves when they batted for an extra session and half Australia first needs to take a lead to set the target and if there's no time to bat of course the game could head for a draw and that's what happened note that england are taking on history over here it's not just the history of being the first team to win at old trafford after deciding to bowl but also a long history a feat which only one team in the history of test cricket has achieved that is coming back to win the series being o and 2 trailing o and 2 and coming back and winning the series there's only one team in the history of test cricket that has done it and it's don bradman's australia back in 1936 and 1937 it was his heroics that australia could come from behind and seal the series since then no team has ever done it now back to 2023 as england are trying to save the series they fell short in a game which they deserved to win now let's let's go to our audience segment where uh, my friend pawan he has asked he's uh, he asked what is your view on whether playing spoil sport in the fourth test match of ashes you know imagination imagination is a very funny thing and in sports it can be dangerous imagination can be dangerous in sports it keeps you in a never ending loop of what could have happened what would have happened some of the greatest moments in sports history are left to imagination to the question of what if the cliche what if Let's take it. Let's take a look at basketball. What if Kobe Bryant was never traded to the Lakers? What if Chris Paul had joined the Lakers later? What if 
Steph Curry was drafted by the Minnesota Timberwolves. What if Kevin Durant never left OKC? You don't. There is no definitive answer for this. When you when you go to NFL, you ask, "What if the 2007 Patriots, who went on a 18 and 0 run, they were undefeated throughout the tournament? What if they could have finished 19 and 0, but instead they lost to Eli Manning and the Giants, 18 and 1?" what if the chicago bears drafted patrick mahomes these are the things that always that always there is no definitive answer for this and when you look at this game it was a perfect example of what if i'll i'll tell you a story in 2013 in 2013 ashes series the same manchester ground england were up 2 and 0 england were up 2 and 0 and australia australia were trying to save the series and chasing a target of 332 on the final day england were down 3 wickets for 37 runs alistair cook jonathan trott and kevin peterson all the three probably the best in that era were back in the stands ryan harris was he, he was finding his rhythm but then rain happened but then rain had different plans and because england were up 2 and 0 because england were up 2 and 0 they had retained the ashes they had retained the ashes and they in fact went on to win the series they went on to win the series 3 and 0 but the point is back to 2023 10 years down the lane england are on the receiving side cricket it's almost as if cricket uh it's almost as if cricket came in full circle the the point i'm trying to make here is that cricket isn't fair sports isn't fair you don't always get what you deserve just because you're a very good team doesn't mean you're going to win we try we work hard we work towards the same goal but in the end things happen the way they are supposed to happen and that applies for life as well when we look back on this series it's a shame that rain had come and stopped and played spoil sport in what could be what could have been one of the most thrilling thrilling encounters in modern day cricket england were a better team england deserved to win but in the end australia took home the urn australia retained the urn because of the only reason that they made less mistakes than england what's good everybody thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on anything regarding this beautiful sport